The reason why we want to talk to you today is because we have a confession to make. And the confession is that there is this psychopathic element that has infiltrated itself into our marriage, trying to separate us. It has introduced itself into our family and it's trying to separate our kids from us. It's trying to separate our friends from us. It's trying to be more important than anybody else. And you probably know it, uh, this, this individual. And you probably carry this individual in your pocket. It, it's this one. You know that, right? It's um, what they usually call a smartphone. I call it a stupid phone because it doesn't do anything I don't want it to do. But it has been designed in such a way that it keeps us addicted. Mm -hmm. And the confession that we have to make is that very early on, we decided not to have a TV in our bedroom, That's right, because yeah. we wanted to have to the, the end of the day to be about each other, to give attention to each other. But somehow, the stupid phone made it into the room. And sometimes it refuses to get out. <laughs> yes. The stupid phone. Mm -hmm. And we need to talk to you about this because the stupid phone has made itself indispensable. Remember the days, if you're old enough, when a mobile phone could only make phone calls? I remember those days. Yep. And then it could barely make text. Now this thing does everything for me. It's my bank. It's my personal assistant. It does my calendar. It does my banking. It, it uh, gets my emails. It makes pictures. I can make videos here of such a cinematic quality. It's unbelievable. It's my photo editor. It's my photocopy machine. This thing is very hard to put down. And then it has got these little um, apps that I call Facebook and Instagram. You may be familiar with those. And they keep not giving me notifications. And every time I open them, it gives me a dopamine hit because somebody has liked something I've said. And it feels so good. So <laughs> guess what? I'm freaking addicted to this thing. And I know it. Mm -hmm. But guess what? It's still hard to put down. And I have to limit myself with it. And it's difficult because we know as mental health experts, as psychologists, we know the data, we know the research. You know, in the beginning when these things first came out, it was like, oh, we wonder what the impact's mm. going to be. Well, it's very, very clear now. And yet it's still something that as humans, we grapple with on a day-to-day -day basis, not just for us and for our relationship with each other, but also um, for our son. We have a 10-year-old boy. So we've you know, recently been having a lot of conversations about what do we do about technology in this household? How, uh, how yeah. are we going to manage it so that it doesn't run our lives? And the conversation hasn't just been about how do we limit uh, our sons uh, watching of the screen itself, mm. not just social media. He hasn't got a social media account, but he's still addicted to games, to be, you know, uh, mostly games and YouTube for kids. He, he can't wait to get to it. Mm -hmm. But it's not him only the problem, it's also us. Yeah. I mean, we've had this conversation yeah. sometimes. It's like, how do we get each other's attention when mm -hmm. stupid Mr. Stupid Phone <laughs> is in the bedroom um, and that's getting been your discussion. attention and getting my attention? So That's been the question. Do we ban them from the bedroom? <laughs> do we ban them from the bedroom? And guess what? Sometimes we're so addicted that we say, oh, but maybe I just keep it in the bedroom because of the alarm, because it's also an alarm. <laughs> so so yep. somehow it creeps into the bedroom. Yep. But we're aware of it mm -hmm. and we're working and mm -hmm. we have to, we have limited. Mm. So our solution has been to have a dedicated hour for us, just for us to, for Having talking. Having said that, the phone is still on the, the bedside table. The phone table. is on silent and it cannot be looked at. But it's, it's but, for, for ourselves. But here's the thing, like yeah. these devices, social media, they're, they're just a tool at the end of the day. You know, we, there are positives to some of these apps. Like they do give us a lot of benefits and we'll talk about that in a minute. But like any other tool, it's how you use it that makes a difference. So um, the reason we wanted to share this with you in relation to mental health particularly is because, you know, so often people ask us in training and in interviews and things like that, you know, so what do we do for our mental health? How can we all improve our well-being? And the typical answers we usually don't want to hear. You know, the basics, the yeah. foundations are, you know, have a good diet, look after your nutrition, get some movement or some exercise, get some good sleep. And everyone knows that whether we want to do it or not is another thing. But it's a number one. But this is something that is forgotten. This is something yeah. that people don't really focus on. Because we don't see the damage sometimes that mm. you can do, right? Mm. 
Hi, I'm Emmy Golding, Director of Psychology for the Workplace Mental Health Institute. We hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. We have more and more videos being released each week, so when you subscribe, you'll get a notification letting you know when a new one's just been published. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and don't miss out on this vital information for yourself, your colleagues and your loved ones. Thank you.